you remember when I made this robot bin that could autonomously navigate around and pick up the trash? Well, the next step for that was to make a robot that could go from room to room and deliver me a cold drink from the fridge. But then lots of people said in the comments that it's no use unless it can go upstairs. I found various robots on YouTube that can go upstairs, of course including Boston Dynamics Spot Mini. My Open Dog project isn't really ready for that though, even though it can walk over lumps of wood. I also have these bends in my stairs, which means there's limited turning space in two places, so it's going to need to be something much smaller. I came across a few tracked robots and robots with multiple wheels on pivot, so they can just drive upstairs. These look good on test steps, but they'd need upscaling significantly to get up actual stairs, which tend to be larger and quite steep. Then I found this stair cleaning robot, which splits itself into three vertical sliding sections to lift itself up on each step. The middle section has four wheels to hold it stable, and it also looks like it has omni wheels so it can slide sideways to clean each step as it goes. My stairs are a lot shallower than that, which means the robot would need to be much thinner, and the middle section would be much less stable when it lifts its back or front up. So I'm going to adapt this design with an extending section that'll allow it to span three steps at once to keep it stable. So now it must be time to 3D print some parts! <laughs> Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So we've got some motors that are going to drive the main axes and I've used these motors quite a few times before. I got them from Gimson Robotics in the UK. They've got motors with gear heads and hefty 12mm output shafts. Those are fitted onto a 3D print between two bits of extrusion which is 2080 extrusion with V slots and you can see we've got them fitted there, one back and one front. The two main axes are driven with 1204 ball screws and those are fitted to a CNC coupler to the motor. Those things just pull apart though so we need some way of restricting it. So I've got a plate with a bearing that's going to fit above that and hold the coupler together essentially with the ball screw poking through it. So there's a ball screw for each motor for each of the front and back axes with bearings top and bottom and of course if I run that motor and hold the ball nut still it will go up and down the ball screw so we've got quite a good linear axis there which is what we need and of course the one on the back is exactly the same. So that's the core of the robot in the middle and it's fairly hefty because the aluminium and also those motors are fairly weighty and of course the steel 12mm ball screws. So all we need now is a piece that fits on that on the back and front to slide up and down. And I've done that with a piece with some V wheels on. So that slots into the V slot and there's four of those wheels and that's a pretty good fit and it runs pretty well. So of course what we need to do is couple that to the ball nut and I'm doing that with another 3D print which just sits on top and will bolt onto that nut. Putting that together gives us a lovely linear sliding axis. It's a bit slower than I wanted, but with that ball screw and that fairly hefty motor, that's going to be pretty powerful, and of course the robot needs to lift itself up. The drive wheels of the robot are going to be attached to these fairly hefty worm gear driven gearboxes that I've used quite a few times before. I used those in the robot bin and of course we've got one of those either side so we can do differential drive. This robot has four drive wheels though because we need to drive the front wheel section as well so there's another pair of those motors that are going to be fitted onto the sliding section we just built. And that looks like this, with four wheels which are just going to skid steer when they drive with differential drive. I've got some TPU tyres to fit so we can get grip on the carpet, and those of course are just a push fit round there, but they're pretty tight so they're nice and grippy. So with that assembled we've got one fairly substantial robot, there's quite a lot of mass in this with the ball screws and the six motors. And what I've actually done here is made sure most of the mass is in this middle section, so we've got the ball screws and four of the motors, Ahead of it we've got two motors and we've got the battery in a pocket there that's going to power it and that means most of the mass is going to be ahead of it going up the stairs as it goes up and then we've got that trailing section to fit on the back next which is going to be much lighter so hopefully having hardly any mass on the back means it won't get dragged back down the stairs backwards. So the front section as you'd imagine uses that other ball screw to make another sliding axis and for now we've got two forks on there made of more V-saw extrusion that looks a bit like a forklift truck. That has a sliding section on with some V-wheels so we can extend over more than two steps. 
So at the moment it's looking like that's going to be a bit back heavy and we still need to add some wheels to that. So I'm using Omni wheels here which are going to work a bit like casters so it can still skid steer and we won't have any problems with drag. So these are wheels with little wheels all around the outside and I've used these in several projects before. That whole assembly of course extends out the back so we can reach over two or three steps at once and that's going to be driven with a rack and pinion type assembly so I've got a rack in there and I've got a motor with the pinion on which fits on top. So as you can see as we move that you can see the pinion turning as the rack moves so of course if I activate the motor and move that with some electricity then we can move that axis. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick answer on the video's sponsor, which is Onshape. Onshape is a cloud-native CAD and PDM platform built for business, created by the founders of SolidWorks because they saw that modern product developers still experience many challenges related to their CAD and PDM systems. So they started from scratch and created Onshape. Onshape have just released a new and extremely popular capability, Onshape Simulation. Onshape Simulation is a unique cloud-native approach to FEA and is the easiest and fastest way to examine meaningful structural analysis results such as stress, displacement and factors of safety as you create and iterate in the Onshape design environment. With simulation built into Onshape's cloud-native architecture, you can build better quality products faster with mechanical feedback that stays in sync with your assembly throughout the product development process. Onshape is built in the cloud, so it works just like Google Docs, so an Onshape document is a single source of truth for your design data. Onshape is always growing. New releases are pushed to the product every three weeks to add new features and functionality. This happens over the air automatically, which means your company will never have to manually deploy a CAD update ever again. I highly recommend the engineers and product developers watching to consider using Onshape for their business. And you can try it for free at onshape.pro slash James Bruton. So now that's actually made the robot very back heavy, which isn't what I really intended. And if I roll the axis out, it gets much, much worse, of course. And there's quite a lot of force needed to be applied to the front there to compensate more than the mass of the batteries. So what I've realized, of course, is sometimes you want it to be front heavy. So particularly when we pick this piece up and particularly when it's at full extension, so it doesn't pull itself down the stairs. And sometimes actually, though, we want it to be back heavy when it picks the front up so it doesn't tip over forwards before it's got its next foot on the step. So what I'm going to do is have a mass that slides up and down on some more rails up here so it can slide backwards and forwards and we can either make it back heavy or front heavy as we need to. That is a belt driven axis which moves two lumps of lead which are a kilogram each and these are diving weights I used in the bipedal robot project to shift mass. And that's just one pulley which takes the belt through some bearings so it's nice and tight and the belt goes from one end to the other. So now, of course, we can be front heavy if we want, and if we roll that weight to the other side, then we're completely back heavy. And even if I roll it to the front and move that back axis right out to full extension, that's still enough to keep it front heavy. As usual, the electronics are an Arduino Mega with an NRF24L01 radio chip so I can remote control it, and I've got three motor drivers on this side and three on the other side so we can drive all those motors. I'm powering it from a 24 volt LiPo and a USB boost pack which just powers the Arduino. I made a custom remote for this robot so we've got one joystick or a thumbstick which can drive it all around for driving the wheels and various buttons we can press to drive those linear axes. Inside is another Arduino Mega, lots of wires and the other radio chip. So I can use that thumbstick to drive the whole thing around and that works okay and you'll notice the back omni wheels obviously they can slip sideways so it's got no problem doing differential drive with the front wheels and the other ones to slip sideways so that works all right. I can also drive the other axes around so we've got those linear axes that I can drive there as well as that back axis there and my linear axis as well to lift those two pieces up and down. So I was thinking about what sensors we could have on this to automatically detect the stairs and work out when it's on flat ground at the bottom and it's got to the top and when it needs to lift up until it clears the next step. But actually, I think it's going to be hard enough to get it up the stairs as it is. It's got quite overcomplicated. So for now, I'm just going to drive it manually with this remote and we'll see if we can actually go up the stairs. So first of all, we've got a position with the bottom step. I'm just driving this manually. That's me in the mirror. I'll speed up the footage in a minute because it takes quite a while to get up the stairs. But for now, I'm going to do it in real time so you can see how it works, at least till we get the first three feet up. So we're going to lift up the front and drive forward and position it there. 
move the mass so it's in the middle and pick up the middle section by sliding both of those front and back linear axes down. Then we can drive on with the next two sections, so those are on the first step, and then we can move the mass to the back and pick up the front foot again. And that gets us so we've got all three feet on three different steps. After that we can move that mass to the front and then we can pick up the back section. And that lifts up fine, now we've got our two front feet down and we've got the mass at the front. And then of course we can suck that in and then repeat the process, picking up that middle section, driving forward and so on and so forth. It made it back upstairs. It took about seven minutes though in real time, which is a little bit too long really. I'm quite happy with the mechanics though, because it made it round those corners, which a longer robot couldn't do, and does actually go up the stairs, although it's quite tricky to get it aligned with the steps properly, and the spacing just right so it can lift its wheels. So I think putting sensors on to make it do that autonomously is actually going to be quite a difficult thing to do. I've had a much better idea though, called the Rumba Stair Lift, which I'm going to build in a future video. For now though, I'm going to publish the CAD and code and all of that's on GitHub and the links in the description to this video. So if you'd like to have a look or build your own, you can. And also if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then you can. And those links are in the description as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of that discussion. And Discord benefits.